Hi, Micro Fuchs. These are our coronavirus tapes, our videos. Um, tapes we're doing while the campus is closed because of the coronavirus epidemic of um, 2020. So these are going to be our follow-up, um, our results from our inoculations that we did on Friday. So the um, all of our plates, all of our um, tubes of media have been incubating at 30 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. Some of these guys I'm probably going to take home and hold them um, in our garage um, for another few days because sometimes at room temperature we can get um, sometimes better results. Okay, so folks, um, this then will be a follow-up on chop chapter 10, Microbial Growth Media. This is the follow-up on our airborne microbe experiment. And you'll recall that um, the goal was to sample airborne microbes, and the way we did this was that we took our auger plates and then we removed the lids. Um, one set of plates, we left the lids off for 30 minutes, uh, letting the microbes fall onto the surface of the auger. And then a second set of plates, we left the lids off for 60 minutes. So the idea is, is that as the airborne microbes fall onto the surface of the auger, if they have the transport proteins to transport nutrients in from the auger um, and have the enzymes to use those nutrients, the cells will start dividing. And within 24 to 48 hours, we should see um, colonies. So colonies often are um, visible with a naked eye. So this is our TSA-60 plate, and I can see this is going to be a problem. I think I should do it like that. And you can see on this TSA-60 plate, there's a number of little dots there, like big ones and little tiny ones. Those are all colonies, and our presumption is that each colony arose from a single microbe, either a bacterium or a fungus, landing on the medium and um, starting to grow and divide. So colonies can have, uh, on average, between 10 to the 8th to 10 to the 9th cells in a colony, and we presume there are genetic clones of one another um, since they all um, arose from a single either bacterial or fungal cell. And again, the cool thing with colonies, we can see they differ, they differ in size, and we're gonna see other properties um, such as pigments and the, um, the characteristics of their border or edge, that their textures, their elevation. So we presume that different types of microbes make different types of colonies. So by doing um, colony counts, we can get an idea of the total number of microbes that landed on the plate and could grow. And then by um, counting the different types of colonies, we can get a feel for the variety of microbes that are growing on our plate. So I'll tell you what we were hoping the results would be. And what's so fun about microbiology working with living organisms is they never read the textbook. They never read the lab manual. So they never know how they're supposed to behave. And this experiment was a good example of that, how the microbes didn't behave quite as we had hoped. So folks, the idea would be that if at 30 minutes, I'll just use this as an example, if at 30 minutes exposure, let's say we had a total of 30 colonies growing on our plate, the hope would be, not the hope, but our prediction would be if we doubled the exposure time, um, we would predict, we, we should see roughly twice as many colonies. So if there were 30 um, colonies on our 30 minute exposure plates, we would predict there should be around 60 colonies on the 60 minute exposure plate. Now, for our particular experiment, it didn't turn out like that, and I think I know why. Um, I had the plates exposed right here in front of me while I was doing the taping, and I was holding um, diagrams and pictures up over the plates, and I think um, for that reason, our 30-minute plates, because they were closer to my field where I was working, our 30-minute plates got more heavily contaminated than the 60-minute plates. So if um, in the real world, if we had time, when we get goofy results like this, we would repeat the experiment after analyzing what we might have done wrong. But I'll just give you our results, folks. So you recall that we used two different media, the triptych soy auger, which is all-purpose media, should grow a wide range of bacteria and fungi. And then we use the Sabrod's dextrose media, which is selective for fungi. The reason we did a zero-minute plate is this was our negative control. We had to make sure that the plates were sterile to start with, that the plates weren't already contaminated. So what was great was on both our TSA um, 
TSA and Sabro's dextrose plate, the zero minute plates, there was no colony growth. So that tells us our plates were sterile to start with. Now here's the goofy results, you guys. On the TSA 30 minute plate, I counted a total of 30 colonies. E even the little tiniest ones that look almost like the, um, a pinprick, those are all colonies. So I got 36 um, total colonies and the varieties, I had five varieties of colonies. So suggesting that I have five different types of microbes growing on my plate. So this is, this is where the microbes didn't read the book. So if I had 36 colonies at 30 minutes, I would have predicted I should have around 70 colonies at 60 minutes. And of course, it didn't turn out like that. So at TSA 60 minutes, I only got 40, 41 colonies, right? So lower than the 70 I would have predicted. And one hypothesis is these 60 minute plates were working further away from my where I was showing the diagrams and my, I was working with my hands. So it might be that the 60 minute plates um, were in an area of the bench where they just weren't gonna, um, uh, there weren't gonna be as many airborne microbes landing on the plates. So again, if, if I were to repeat this, I'd set up the plates um, on an empty bench and, and walk away, right? So there wasn't any human interference. Um, so again, on our 60 minute plates, I got a total of 41 colonies, but the varieties did increase. So I got 10 different types of microbes growing on the, um, the 60 minute plate. So that was interesting. I only had five on the 30 minute plate. Okay. And then folks, we would predict on our Sabarod's dextrose media, um, we would predict we'd see fewer colonies. And the reason is, remember the triptych soy auger, it's all purpose, it should grow a wide range of both bacteria and fungi. In contrast, the Sabarod's dextrose, it's selective for fungi. Um, through the high um, dextrose or glucose concentration and the low pH, we're gonna inhibit a lot of um, bacterial colonies. So again, the Sab, the Sab zero minute exposure, no colony growth, so that tells us the plates were, were sterile, and that's awesome. And then on the um, SAB 30 minute plates, I have 11 colonies and that is consistent. Um, we had like 36 colonies on the TSA 30 plates. On the SAB, we only have 11. Um, so we would presume that on the SAB plate, we only have fungi such as yeast and, and molds growing. We shouldn't have bacteria or very few bacteria. So that would suggest that on our TSA plate about um, about, what, 25 of the colonies probably were bacterial, okay? And then on the, oh, excuse me, and also on the SAB 30, I saw three different varieties of colonies, so three different types of fungi growing. And on the SAB 60 minute plate, and again, you guys, this is just like, this isn't what we had predicted. I only had like eight colonies, so that is not not what we predicted. We thought we would have seen a doubling, so we actually had a decrease in the number of colonies. And I had three varieties, so the, the um, varieties of fungi growing didn't alter. And again, folks, I think this might have been because I was working over the plates while they were being exposed. Um, again, since the results aren't what we predicted, we'd run the experiment again, trying to correct for any of those um, interfering factors and um, see if we get different data. Now, folks, just an application here, um, had the experiment worked as we hoped, that we'd see a doubling of the number of colonies if we doubled the exposure time. Practical application is, like if you're doing surgery, you want to try to reduce the surgery time, the, the time that the patient's skin is, is open, right? Because you want to reduce the potential for airborne contamination of the surgical site. Likewise, with um, sterile media, um, remember, you guys, we said we don't want to take the lids of our auger plates off because of the airborne microbes. And any kind of sterile instruments, once you take them out of their wrapping, right, they're going to, that's when contamination begins with airborne microbes. So we always want to try to reduce the time that sterile media, sterile surgical instruments, um, um, we want to reduce the time that they're exposed to air to reduce the chance of airborne contamination. And likewise, with any kind of surgery, you want to reduce the time that the skin is open or mucous membranes are open. Okay, folks, I think that's it for airborne microbes. So we'll stop this one, and then we'll do um, 
we'll do the next one will still be chapter 10 and we're gonna look at the blood auger plates yeah I did a throat nose and gum swabs so we'll look at the um, hemolysis on the blood auger